could you say a leader, a leader could fail? Because we talk a lot about successful leaders and, uh, uh, and what a successful leader looks like and what they need to do to implement uh, things across the business. Leaders can actually fail and, and people can actually fail to make an impact. I guess the main thing is, is if they failed on one element, it's how quickly can you pick yourself back up again to change that failure into a yeah. success. And again, I suppose with that, it's, it's actually having the, the ability to actually say, I got that wrong. And, and I think that's, you know, one of, the, one of the key reasons that leaders fail is that they, they take their eye off the ball or they might be focusing on one thing. Um, it's as a, as a business that's developing and growing and, and probably growing faster than, than they're used to, there's a, a tendency to focus on the numbers. If you focus on the numbers, then you're missing a huge part of the business and that's your people. And it's focusing on them and, and finding out are they all right? Because if they're not all right, then the numbers are only going to go one way and they're going to start to, to, to drop. I think long gone are the days where kind of performance management is just the be all and end all. Performance management is key. I think it's the way that you communicate it is, is more important. Everybody's here to achieve. For example, here, if we're not supporting businesses, we're failing. Because yeah. if we're not supporting businesses, they're not coming back for repeat business. We're not going to get more work. We're not going to win contracts. It snowballs. And before we know it, we're, we're on a downturn. So um, it's that kind of, it's that piece that is how you get the most out of your staff uh, and how you communicate to them. And um, the main thing is it's, it's collaboration across your teams. Yeah. Uh, we're all here to, to achieve one goal, which is, which is written on the wall, implementing business support interventions to facilitate a change. If we can do that within our business, how we get about it internally is just working together, collaborating as a team. We're, at the minute, we're growing rapidly. We're not failing. And I think that's because we've got such a close-knit team. Everybody knows what they're doing to a fashion. We probably could improve it a little bit, but so that's a continuous improvement cycle. We know we need to do that. Um, that's how we get in. That's how we're winning work. And we're just nice people and we're collaborating internally to, to get the most out of the contracts that we're on. But more importantly, provide the right solution for the right client that they are happy with the work that we're doing. Yeah, and I think that thing is, and it goes back to uh, something we mentioned before, and that's in the first place recruiting the right people, mm. bringing in the skill set that you might not necessarily have yourself, but that somebody can support you with, then allowing them to do it. That's that's another thing where leaders can fail is they bring the right people in, but they suppress them so much that it stops them from doing it. Um, we're fortunate in the way that we, we operate. Yes, we have formal management meetings and we'll sit down and we'll discuss things, but also we're quite happy to just have an exchange over the desks. So you know, we keep up to date with what what situations each people's working with. And it's it's having that comfort to actually say to somebody, what would you do with this one? You know, because I don't know all the answers, you don't know all the answers, but between us we can work out what's going to be a pretty good solution to something. What's your thoughts on kind of competition, internal competition? So, um, you know, I, I'm a big advocate for competition, healthy competition, not, you know, that it gets too, um, too competitive, that everybody's then, you know, not collaborating because everybody's not, not wanting to share knowledge because they want to kind of outcompete each other. Even competitors in business, I collaborate with our competitors. I think it's great. It keeps you on your toes. Yeah. Keeps you wanting to strive for the next thing. Um, so then you're not kind of left behind with with your kind of branding or your service level agreements or your offer or your um, level of service to your clients, customer service standards. Competition keeps you on your feet. But that's external. What, what's your thoughts on internal? It's good as long as it's managed properly. Mm. Uh, and what you don't want is you don't want people to be pitched one against the other where you're focusing on the negative side of it. It's more like if, if somebody's really performing well and somebody else within that team or somebody at a similar level is not performing well, team those two people up and, and get the one that's doing well to, to pull the other one along a little bit and things like that. The way that we do it with an ear is that we all benefit from the success of the business. Mm. And as an individual, you also benefit from your own performance. But by having that overriding factor that it's the business that's got to do well 
to, to drive that. It stops anybody sort of doing well at the at the the cost of somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's like pulling it all together in that same direction. Yeah, and that's the ethos that we, we want to get. It's, it's a team effort. And if we then start to then get into working in silos, I think that's when we've got a problem. Yeah. You know, there is certain businesses that you have to do that, especially if you're in kind of a, um, a standalone field role where you're out and about. You've got other people doing the same thing. But if you are genuinely the only person on that, then internal kind of healthy competition is pretty much impossible if you're on your own. But that team ethos is what drives our business forward. For example, the um, the event that we're going to down at Barnsley College uh, in a couple of weeks' time, it's to do with the business. It's not to do with me. While it was me that set it up, it's not to do with who sets it up. It's it's to do with the business. We're all going down. It's the business that's partnering with somebody. It's not one individual from the business that said we're going to go and partner. And I think that's great because when we're actually looking at instilling that um, the, you know the branding behind Brook. It's not about just having a nice logo and making our you know website look nice. It's how we perceive ourselves externally. It's how we operate externally. It's our, our our level of performance within our clients. It's how we look when we go into these events. And if we're all turning up as a team. Sometimes as we grow in, it might not be manageable to have six, seven, eight people. But as a team of five or six. Um, we can all go down and be part of that team to showcase the partnerships that we've got with colleges and chamber of commerce because it's the business and you guys are the business. That's the way that we want to go down. And I think that's one of the things. I mean, obviously, this business was a one-man band at one point, and now it's not. Um, but also, since you took over the business, you start to take it in a different direction. And that direction is, yes, you are the, the figurehead of it, but... People are now starting to, to recognise me and the other people as that's the face of Brooke because that's the person I work with. And mm -hmm. I think that's what we, we're trying to get through to there is that, you know, we, we are a, a business that is, it's a bit Ron Seal. We do what we say, what it says on the tin. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we promise something and we deliver it. And that's what people like about us. Yeah, exactly. And one of the things that, that is that I've sometimes found as, as being one of the most difficult parts of being a leader is, well, actually two things. One is I can't do everything and I don't expect to do everything, but sometimes you want to do everything because that's just what you, sometimes the expectations set for that person to do absolutely everything. Um, but one of the other kind of most difficult kind of things of, of being a leader is kind of making sure that you um, kind of, get everything right and it's too much of an expectation to get everything right and actually not everything that we've done right over the last 12 months has been right I can think of quite a few things that we've done and gone probably shouldn't have done that taken too much on it's failed but actually being able to then say no sometimes is sometimes quite difficult because you want to please everybody you want to grow the business but actually as a leader sometimes you need to then just take a step back and go a bit of analysis on this we can't do everything so we need to take a step back and choose the high value um, contracts or um, inquiries or um, kind of developments into new areas that we want to go into and say there's no point in doing everything because some of it will work and some of it won't it's about identifying which ones that potentially aren't I think what well, yeah you're right in that and I mean obviously one of the, the key things that you've got to do is to make sure you delegate free your time up because you've got to focus on the, the strategy of the business. Uh, and I guess, as, again, that's, that's one of the things that we demonstrate and that's what we then roll out to the businesses is that you use the, the pool of knowledge you've got there to help and, and, and look at things and yes, take stock of what you've done in the past. Would we do, do some of the things we've done again? No. Would we do them differently? Probably. Some of them we'd just say no to because it's actually been more trouble than, than it's been worth. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. It's just about identifying those at the beginning. And, you know, for a, for an innovative business that's growing, it's just it's the easiest thing to say is yes and work out a plan how to deliver it. Um, but actually, it's, that's probably the wrong thing. You shouldn't be doing that. We should be actually taking a, a more strategic look at some of the growth areas and going, um, this is aligned to where we want to go, not kind of... Uh, aligned to 
something that we might want to do in the future. It's just about prioritizing those tasks that are, um, are going to have a high impact and um, either a, a low cost or a high impact and a cost associated to it. Because as long as we've got high impact to the business, that's the main thing that we're looking for. Thanks for listening to Biz15. Once again, I, I hope you found it informative and beneficial. These kind of topics are what we eat, breathe and sleep every day. And they're the kind of interventions that we deliver for our clients. Make sure you follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and we will be recording more sessions in the next coming weeks.